I'm Alan and this is Daddy. We are in White Clay Creek State Park in the southeast Pennsylvania. No, we're not. We're in Delaware. He just loves to argue. He's in Delaware. I'm in Pennsylvania. We're both in White Clay Creek State Park and we're here to get a line on where Mason and Dixon began their work. Oh, I get it. Get a line on where Mason and Dixon began their work. It's not funny, is it? No. Oh, sorry. Not funny. So this pylon is called the Ark Corner Monument, and this is where that odd little quarter circle that forms the north boundary of Delaware begins. And less than a mile that direction is the Tri-Corner Monument that delineates the boundary between Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Delaware. And that's where the famous Mason and Dixon line begins or ends, depending on which way you're going. In fact, it is the uh, end point of two Mason Dixon lines, an east-west one that divides Maryland and uh, Pennsylvania, and a north-south one that divides Maryland and Delaware. No, it's not. It's just one single line. There's only one Mason and Dixon line. It just has a 90 degree well, bend. No, no, lines don't have 90 degree bends. Uh, lines are straight. They, they're formed by two points. Not always. Squiggly lines are lines and they're not straight. Well, okay, fine. Look, if you want to get technical about the whole thing, uh, uh, lines don't have end points either. So technically, it should be called the two Mason Dixon line segments. Just tell them who Mason and Dixon were. I will do that. Charles Mason was an astronomer and Jeremiah Dixon was a surveyor and they worked together between 1763 and 1767 to resolve a sometimes bloody dispute between Pennsylvania and Maryland over their boundary. So why do you need an astronomer to settle a land dispute? Well, okay. This is uh, uh, the 18th century. There are no GPS systems, so just as sailors had to navigate by stars on the seas, surveyors had to depend on the stars to know exactly where they are. But it's a lot more difficult on land. It's often impossible to see where the horizon is. They have to do their calculations at night, and there are lots of wild animals and unfriendly natives and settlers. Um, there's, uh, they're going over mountains, and they're slashing their way through the brush, and there are no roads yet, and it was a very difficult task. So why doesn't the Mason-Dixon line come all the way to here? Why is it stopping eight-tenths of a mile that way? Well, because the arc line is part of what they call the 12-mile circle. You see, way back when William Penn was running things in Pennsylvania, uh, he had control of this area too, which is called the Lower Delaware. How can this be Lower Delaware when we're in the northern part of the state? Well, you see, back then it wasn't a state. In fact, it was uh, barely a colony at that point. But it refers to being on the lower part of the Delaware River. Anyway, the people here weren't getting along with the people in Pennsylvania. So Penn split it in two and created two colonies. The capital of Delaware was Newcastle, and the land was supposed to include a 12-mile radius from the center of Newcastle. So that's the 12 mile circle? Exactly. Except they probably should call it a 24 mile circle because it's 24 miles in diameter. Or the 24 pi circle to have the right circumference. Now, uh, the eastern side of Maryland is a line that uh, divides the Del Mar Peninsula into and is tangent to the 12 mile circle. That would actually be a line segment that divides the peninsula and is tangent to the 24 pi circle. Right. Uh, that's, um, that's one of the line segments that Mason and Dixon worked out. Uh, the other segment uh, between Pennsylvania and Maryland runs across at 39 degrees and 43 minutes north latitude. Well, that seems like a convenient number. Well, he was um, supposed to be at 40 degrees north latitude, but that would have cut through the middle of Philadelphia, the capital of Pennsylvania. So a compromise was made to make it 15 miles south of Philadelphia, and that ends up being 39 degrees and 43 minutes. So now you have this wedge. It's too far south to be Pennsylvania, and it's outside of the 24 pi circle, so it can't be Delaware. And it's east of the transpeninsular tangent, so it can't be Maryland. Well, here's what they did. They took a, uh, a straight north-south line. Line segment. Yes, line segment. And they took it from the point of tangency to the 39 degree, 43 minute line. Thus, they took a little land from Delaware and gave it to Maryland, and Delaware gets to claim the wedge. So, is the short line segment that runs from the Tricorner Monument to here part of the Mason-Dixon line or not? Uh, well, that would be the two Mason-Dixon line segments. It 
No, that's called the Mason-Dixon line extension, or rather the Mason-Dixon line segment extension. Hey, taking a moment for a commercial break here. I ran all of our math terminology past Patrick at Patrick Just Math Tutoring. He has a fantastic, straightforward math tutoring channel on YouTube. Now, he tells me that we could call it the three Mason-Dixon line segments, or we could actually call it the Mason-Dixon curve, but, you know, I don't think that's any better. It's like telling someone you're going to draw a curve in the sand. It doesn't have the same impact as drawing a line in the sand. And he also says that the naming of a circle is a challenge and uh, different people, engineers, mathematicians, geographers, etc. might do it differently. So perhaps it should just be uh, the Newcastle circle. Anyway, if you're not familiar with Patrick's site and you're a little confused on math, it's the place to go. He's really terrific. You can click on Patrick here or you can click on the uh, link below in the lower right hand corner of my page. Okay, back to our video. Finally, that's resolved. Yes, well, the Mason-Dixon line would go on to figure prominently in the Missouri Compromise and theoretically divided the North from the South in the Civil War. Delaware, which was considered a Northern state, is actually east of the Mason-Dixon line, uh, though, and while they didn't secede, they were a slave state. So when Lincoln freed the slaves in the South with the Emancipation Proclamation, it didn't include Delaware, which remained a slave state until the 13th Amendment was ratified on December 6th, 1865. Great. Is there more? Well, uh, there's always more, of course. That will have to wait for another video. Don't forget to subscribe and like us, pin us, and tweet us. You can leave your comments below, and in the lower right, you'll find some other terrific channels that you'll want to check out. And remember parents, grab your kids, kids grab your parents, head out to a park or a museum or some other historical spot. Do you know your way out of here? Of course. I can I can survey. I brought my uh, my compass with me. I'll, oh, not uh, the compass. Some... That's how we got lost in the corn no, maze. No, look, I can handle. We got out of the corn maze. Are we oh. still there? Look, if the sun is there, right? And Why it's just, just afternoon, can, I'm thinking. But we can, so we can so probably... Hey, I know you're wondering why it was. We were so close to the Tri-Corner Monument. Why didn't we get over there and uh, record, too? Well, it's hunting season, and with our luck, we'd probably get shot. Yeah, that would not be good. No. No, not no. good. Not good, good at all. No. No. Well, nice little hike in here. Which way do we go to get out of here? Uh, is that way? that way? That is way. Oh, wait, maybe it is that way. Not as easy as it seems. All right, this way.